So <clears throat> this set behind you, the one that you're sit sitting in front of, so one animator will work on this set uh, alone. Yeah, it's a kind of a solitary uh, existence being an animator. Uh, there's a lot of prep work that goes into setting a, a, a shot up from you know getting the puppets ready and getting the set dressed and lit and getting the camera in the right position. There's a whole lot of activity that goes in you know before a shot is started. But then once the camera starts and you start taking frames, it's essentially just one animator on set with the puppets bringing the thing to life through their will and their hands. And so it, you know, a shot can take anywhere from a day to several weeks to even months to finish. Uh, and it's, so it's a long time where an animator is communing with this strange little you know, assemblage of steel and silicon. I, I equate uh, puppets with little vampires because they, they suck life out of the animator. Whatever life you see on screen is life that's been sucked out of an animator. But how does, <clears throat> how, how, how do the uh, animators stay on character? Because I mean, these characters are already formed on, yeah. in, in the voice recording. What you do with animators is essentially the same thing that you do with actors, which is you cast them. There are some animators that are really great at doing female characters, for instance, or someone who, someone who is really good at doing action or uh, kind of sensitive emotional moments. So you try to find you know, the specific skill set of the animator and put them on a sequence or a shot that plays to that strength. Um, we, ca we create character bibles that define who these characters are. We do a lot of animation tests early on to, to make sure that these characters are moving in a unique and distinctive way. So a 10-year-old girl isn't moving the same as a 70-year-old man. You try to find different little personality quirks and different ways of moving so they all feel like unique characters. And that is one of the innovations I think that we've brought to stop motion is that the animation style that we do is kind of a, a skewed naturalism. It's rooted in real life. It's really well observed, really detailed and nuanced performance. So these characters do not feel just like a little puppet or a doll. They actually feel like real living creatures that have an inner life. And, uh, and, and, and you do that by getting the best artists in the world and then, and then focusing them on, on their strengths. How many animators do you have on working on a, on a picture at the same time? It varies. I mean, typically the, the, the group of animators is somewhere between 20 and 25 people. That might kind of flex or, or contract depending on where we're at within a production. But it's, it's that, that's around the group of, of animators that, that take to make one of these films. And why are you uh, in Portland, Oregon, and not in Burbank? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Portland, uh, Portland has its own kind of unique personality and character, and we find that that, that helps to kind of forge who we are. It's, it's, it's where we were, it's, it's where the, the DNA of this company comes from. It's where this company arose. And so we find that people who naturally gravitate to a place like Portland, which is a little bit off-center, which is a little bit kind of quirky and unusual and, and, and draws a certain kind of person, a certain kind of artist, that's all consistent with the kind of films that we do and the, and the interesting point of view and perspective that we have in our films. And so while there are times like now when you're in the stony heart of winter and you're freezing on set with a tiny little space heater keeping your hands warm, wishing that maybe you were in, in the sunny, uh, blithe uh, climate of, uh, of Southern California, uh, we found that kind of as, as a culture, being in Portland really does help kind of ground us in something that is, it is very special and unique and we really wouldn't have it any other way. And is there, is there no, I guess there's a, a talent pool in Portland that will support yeah, your production. There is, but our our crew here, while you know we have a, we draw a lot from local talent and from Portland, the Pacific Northwest, and the West Coast of the United States, it really is a multi multicultural and multinational uh, group of people here. There are people from all corners of the world. The people who work in stop motion, who gravitate towards this field and this art form, it, it's a, it's a small group of people, and they're very passionate about what they do. And we scour the planet trying to find the best talent in this field. And so when you walk around the studio, you'll see people from all over the world bringing their, their immense talents and unique cultural perspectives to our films, which is, again, why I think these things have a different point of view. And um, last question, how many people are working on the film at, this, at the same time? How big does your crew get? At its, at its peak, a, a crew on, on a stop motion film like The Box Trolls will be about 300, 330 people. Uh, you know, Everything from you know designers and sculptors to cameramen and 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 you know set builders and animators and visual effects artists. It's a it's an army of people that it takes to to bring one of these things to life, and uh, but 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 they do it in a way that we're, we all kind of have a, a a common point of view and a common love of the craft and and a desire to push the art form forward, and that kind of unifies everybody that that works here. Even you know down to, to every last you know member of that crew.